Today we'll be talking about the errors and limitations of the bridge equipment of an echo sounder. So for those of you who don't know what an echo sounder is, echo sounder is used on ships to measure the depths of water, particularly the depth of water below the keel of the ship, uh, an assessment of which can be used for safe navigation. So like all other instruments on board, the echo sounder also has its limitations and sometimes the lack of proper interpretation of the data can cause very serious consequences in terms of unsafe navigation. So let's start discussing the errors of the echo sounder or the errors that the echo sounder is prone to. We'll start with the instrument errors. Now these errors may not be too easily apparent or correctable but may occur without any warning signs as they are just the errors of the instrument and its functional parts. It is therefore important that one should not blindly rely on the first obtained soundings and should run checks and verifications using other means as well. When we say other means of uh, checking soundings, we mean using the hand lead line. This is uh, true not only for the echo sounder, but any other navigational equipment on the bridge. So always try and obtain supplement information using other means as well. So let's start with instrument errors. In the instrument errors, the first type of error is the propagation error. Uh, if the sounder is set to work correctly, then the velocity of the sound wave is 1475 meters per second. But because of extreme temperature or salinity of the seawater, if the velocity of the sound waves results in 1520 meters per second, then all depths will appear too small as the calibrated speed already fed into the systems is 1500 meters per second based on 1500 meters per second of velocity of sound waves. In this case, the echo clearly returns too quickly and marks the paper before the arm has swept the correct distance. This error is small and of no practical significance, but for academic interest to the deep sea navigator only. However, hydrographic surveyors and people who make reports, this error is significant for them. Now, before I proceed any further, please make sure that you have seen my other videos on echo sounders. I'll provide you with the links to those videos in the description section below, because this video assumes that you have a basic understanding of how an echo sounder works, what an echo sounder is, and its principle of operation. This video only focuses on its errors and limitations. We move on to the next instrument error, which is the stylus arm rotation. So affecting the mechanical graphical types, the effect of this error is similar to if, for example, the correct speed is 20 RPM, but the gearing has slipped, worn out, and the actual speed is 30 RPM, then all soundings will register too great. This error can be large and dangerous. The rotation speed can be checked with the use of a stopwatch against the actual speed, which can be obtained from the technical specifications provided with the equipment's manual. Now, this is one of the main checks carried out during the routine maintenance of the echo sounder. Nowadays, of course, generally the shore technicians do this job as gone are the days of the radio officers. However, the new electrical, issue, electrical officers or electricians on board on some ships are quite capable of carrying out such maintenance. Still, the main idea behind discussing this is that you are aware of the limitations presented by this instrument. For the digital displays type of echo sounders, this can be equated with the power spikes or the picture not being in sync with the display scales as sometimes you see on your computer screens as well. So now we move on to environmental errors. So these are the errors or effects on the soundings obtained which may occur due to the existing conditions of the sea and or human error. So further discussion is let's talk about uh, the environmental errors so you must always keep in mind that the charted depths are based on the certain datum for the particular region and may not always correspond well with the actual depths obtained by the echo sound in this case the vessel's raft and current tidal conditions will have to allow for if you wish to compare the sounder depth with the charted depth but if you want to know only the depth of water under the keel which is also called UKC or under kill clearance, these errors of, are of no consequence. However, the fact that the sounding is 
you can see a total depth of water should be very clearly stated and understood as this ambiguity has often led to grounding incidents all right so make sure that the officer on watch on the bridge is aware whether the displayed depth is the under clearance or the total depth of the water that includes the draft of the ship aerations and water noise now air bubbles in the water also cause echoes the most common cause of this is when the ship is going astern besides the aeration can also occur in rough weather and with excessive stern trim a rough hull can also cause turbulence which may produce echoes or water noise and weaken the proper echoes so during such conditions you must bear this in mind and treat the soundings cautiously let's move on to human errors now so human errors can result from setting the display to show full depth of water and assuming the readings are under clearance as discussed before the errors can also result from reading the incorrect scale especially on older types with multiple scales selecting the wrong transducer now many ships often have forward and aft transducers not only a forward transducer so if you select the forward transducer while having a big stern trim you may misread the under key clearance and run your ship aground often officers forget to use the echo sounder altogether especially when approaching ports that could result in a big fiasco as well switching of the alarm as sounded by the echo sounder and not checking what the alarm is for may also result in accidents then we move on to false echoes these are the most common types of errors and are experienced quite frequently and should be well understood to be able to interpret the real or correct soundings false echoes or one of the types of false echoes is round the clock echoes also known as second trace returns now if i can show you through animations but i'll also provide you with an explanation of what's going on in this animation now false readings may be obtained from a correctly adjusted sounder when the returning echo is not received until after the stylus has completed one or more of its cycles and so repassed the transmission line and the next pulse has been transmitted uh, if i can explain in other words the instrument received and showed an echo which should not have been received in the first place as the range in use will ensure that only the pulse that was sent out is duly received and interpreted this can occur when one is unsure of the approximate depth of water and hence it is important that the correct range scale is used this may also affect the digital display types in that when the echo may be received after the sweep of the shown screen is completed if a sounder has a scale divided so that one complete cycle of the stylus corresponds to a depth of say 300 meters an indicated depth of 10 meter could be a sounding of 10 meters 310 meters or even 610 meters such false readings can sometimes be recognized if the trace appears weaker than normal for the depth recorded or passes through the transmission line or has a feathery appearance let's move on to multiple echoes now what are multiple and if i can show you again through animations the transmission pulse in depths as great as several hundred meters may be reflected not once but several times between the seabed and the surface of the sea or the sea ship's bottom before its energy is dissipated causing a number of echoes to be recorded on the trace these multiple echoes can be faded out by reducing the sensitivity of the set in the first phase settings multiple echoes are too obvious to cause confusion but should be guarded against in the second or subsequent phase setting the sounder should always be switched on in the first phase and then phase deeper to find the first echo echoes other than bottom echoes seldom have the reflective qualities to produce strong multiple echoes and may sometimes be distinguished from the bottom echo by increasing the sensitivity of the set and comparing the multiple echoes the other type of echoes or false echoes result from thermocline and pelagic fish now layers of water with differing speed of sounds shoals of fish submarine springs seaweed turbulence from the interaction of tidal streams or eddies with solid particles in suspension as well as electrical faults or man made echoes 
Now, echoes other than that showing the true sounding may appear on the trace of an echo sound for a variety of reasons. They do not usually occur, obscure the echo from the seabed, but their correct attribution often requires considerable experience. For example, this echo here may be a dolphin. I know it sounds a bit unbelievable, but these things have happened. There are often sometimes some errors or echoes known as double echoes. So with many types of echo sounder, an echo may be received at about twice the actual depth. This marks on the trace is caused by the transmission pulse after reflection from the seabed being reflected from the surface and again from the seabed before reaching the, the receiving transducer. It is always weaker than the true echo and will be the first to phase out if the sensitivity of the receiver is reduced. All right. Other echoes which may be received by the echo sounder may be referring to plankton, krill or fish. So I hope this video was useful to you and it helps with your learning and understanding of the equipment of echo sounder let me know which